There has been a lot of controversy recently about pre-implantation genetic testing of embryos during IVF. I think that most of this controversy arises from misunderstanding about how this testing works and how it can be helpful when you are choosing embryos for transfer. So let's do a deep dive today into PGT and clear up these misconceptions. Stay tuned. First, let's mention five facts that everybody agrees on. Number one, the correct number of chromosomes in a normal human embryo is 46. Number two, these 46 chromosomes are composed of 23 pairs of chromosomes, two copies of each chromosome. One copy comes from the sperm and one copy from the egg of the mother. Number three, many human embryos have abnormalities in the number of chromosomes. There can be an extra chromosome or missing chromosomes. These are known as as aneuploidies. Number four, as women grow older, the percentage of abnormal embryos they make increases. And number five, around 95% of the chromosome abnormalities found in an embryo can trace their origin to abnormalities that arose in the formation of the egg. So how does PGT work? The main idea behind PGT is to identify abnormal embryos that have a zero chance for producing a healthy live-born baby and avoid using using them for an embryo transfer. Now, since no test is ever 100% accurate, let's say instead that the aim of PGT is to identify and avoid using embryos that have a near zero chance of producing a healthy live birth. How do we know that transferring abnormal embryos results in a near zero chance for producing a healthy live born baby? The best way to know is by transferring abnormal embryos and then seeing what happens. One way to do this is to compare the live birth rates between embryos that have been tested to ones that haven't. Remember, older women make more abnormal embryos than younger women. So for this experiment, we have to compare women of a similar age. Here is data from the US IVF database. You can look at all of the embryo transfers in a given year. The most recent year for which we have live birth data is 2023. They are grouped by age. You can also filter the results. So let's compare the live birth rate when a single embryo was transferred when PGT was not used. For women under the age of 35, the live birth rate was 45%. The live birth rate when PGT was used was 53%, an improvement of about 8%. What about 35 to 37 year olds? Without PGT, 39%. With PGT, 49%, a 10% improvement. For 38 to 40 year olds, there was a 22% improvement. For 41 to 42 year olds, an embryo transfer with PGT resulted in 27% more live births. So when you don't test embryos, there is a chance that the embryos you are transferring are abnormal. Older women make more abnormal embryos, so the relative chance for transferring an abnormal embryo gets higher as women get older. As a result, the chance for a live birth gets lower. Some people might argue that we don't know for sure that we are transferring abnormal embryos. They'd be right. We are estimating based on probabilities. There is a way to get around this objection, however, and that is to perform what scientists call a non-selection study. In this type of study, a group of people volunteer to have their embryos tested, but the results are not revealed. The embryos are selected for transfer based solely on their appearance under the microscope, the same way they would have been selected without using PGT. Then you determine who got pregnant and who didn't, who had a live birth and who didn't. Then you go back and determine what happened when abnormal embryos were transferred. A few years ago, this exact study was done. Over 400 transfers were performed. 312 turned out to be a PGT normal embryo. The live birth rate in this group was 65. In 102 transfers, the embryo test result was abnormal. In this group, the live birth rate was 0%. In another study, a fertility center agreed to transfer known abnormal aneuploid embryos. After 106 transfers, they had one live birth. Another center that also agreed to transfer abnormal aneuploid embryos has not seen any live births so far after 25 transfers. So all told, we have outcomes from the transfer of 233 abnormal aneuploid embryos with one live birth. That is a 0.4% live birth rate. Zero 
0.4%. So let's go back to the purpose of PGT, which as I stated earlier, is to identify embryos that have a near zero chance for producing a live birth and avoid using them for transfer. The best data at this moment indicates that the probability for having a live birth from the transfer of an embryo designated as aneuploid by a PGT lab is nearly zero. Avoiding the transfer of those embryos seems like a pretty reasonable treatment option. Infertility TV is your most trusted source for accurate information on infertility and miscarriage. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button right now. A new episode is released every week. Don't miss any episodes. You can also check us out on our website, ivf1.com, where you can become a patient.